Welcome. This is my dear friend and colleague, Bonnie Duran, and we're here today to talk about the creation of the model and kind of the overall purpose of why we think it's a one way to showcase the value of participation in research, community participation in research. So Bonnie, just from your own experience and your own use of th and thinking about CBPR and community engaged research over many, many years, how would you say you think about the model and its importance or its usefulness? The model to me, you know, we, you and I have been working on this model for how many years? 15 years or so. And I think in the very beginning we were doing uh, research with communities and realizing just how important authentic community engagement and partnership was in research. So, And we were discovering things that were important to that process of engagement and wanted to document that. And I think that sent us on another quest of uh, really forming this model. And just to you know, briefly state what we did was, and I'm sure you've covered this before, but what we did was we scoured all of the literature to look at what the uh, best practices and what uh, you know, an interdisciplinary perspective on what good community engagement looked like. We looked at the business literature, we looked at the public health, social work, uh, social sciences, and applied sciences, and really picked out, uh, were really, um, you know, looked at the environment for what people were teaching about community engagement. And we came up with our first model. And this, the model that we have right now is the most current iteration of that. And I think, you know, one of the foundational principles of it that it is a, uh, it will never be finished. It is a, uh, it is a, uh, will continue to evolve and different uh, iterations will come out as our uh, work continues and and will change depending on uh, the communities that we're working with and the context that we're in. So it's not meant to be seen as the way see, uh, community engagement happens, but as a guide to start investigating what brings people together in a way that promotes trust and equity. So how so, do you think context starts? How do you think we start um, in thinking about Partici community participation. Right. So uh, another foundational principle I think of our concept is that in public health we're very big on something called the social ecologic framework. And that is to understand the largest influences over behavior of organizations or individuals. And I think the context really represents that a, a large social ecologic um, uh, framework or the forces that have an impact on communities and academics coming together to investigate problems that are happening in their environment. So that's the context and those are things like social and structural forces, policy and funding for research, things like that. And those things will uh, determine whether communities and academics come together and then the next uh, the next um, consideration for us all to have is something that we have called partnership processes. And in that we look at how the uh, people coming together, the uh, community-based organizations, the histories of the academics themselves, the academic environment, the funding environment, how that relates to how people get along and how power is shared and how um, equity is established and how communication is established and whether we understand each other and respect each other. And so that's the second domain of practice in our CBPR model. First is context, which influences partnership processes. And that next we have the science itself, how both of those things determine the interventions that we decide to do. Uh, the epidemiologic studies, you know, descriptive or in intervention uh, uh, research that we want to do. And for me, one of the biggest advantages of doing community engaged research is that one of the foundational principles of Western science not in engagement is what I like to call or what others have also called a universalizing our subjectivity. You know, as Western scientists, we think that we can think of what it's like to live in, you know, reservations in the United States or poor communities, or uh, we think that we can imagine what it's like to have a 
totally different social location, and that's just not true. And when we have a real good engagement with our community partners, what the science look like is that we have community-based theories of etiology, we have community-based theories of change, which totally are uh, much better approaches to dissemination and um, much better approaches to sustain sustainability and fit within the cultural and economic and historical context. So that is uh, that. So we go from context to partnership to intervention and then the outcomes that we're looking at. Of course we're looking at uh, health equity. I mean that is the uh, fundamental big outcome that we're looking at and the many ways that that is uh, manifested in communities. Maybe it's better access to health and medical care. Maybe it's uh, training more people from the um, so-called disadvantaged community in you know, mainstream sciences. Maybe it's more utilization and funding for traditional approaches to public health and medicine that you know, resonate better and might have better outcomes than what we might be trying to promote in those communities. So. When I think of the whole model of the context leading to partnering processes and then the science, the intervention, and the research that is done, I think of some of those intervention and research um, processes really as outputs, that you have an output related, a short-term output related to increased partnership synergy, or a short-term output related to interventions that actually are centered within the culture and community, which, as we've said before, really reflect the new domain or the new set of uh, research related to dissemination and implementation, understanding right. the importance of context, understanding the importance of being centered within a community or local context of to be able to then be lead to the outcomes of more. When you move to the outcome domain, we move towards those issues that I think of as intermediate outcomes, like changes in the policy environment or changes in the increased ownership by the community of that intervention because it is culturally centered or it has greater ability to be sustained in a community because it is culturally centered and based in what the community wants. And with those greater sustainability and ownership and more equal relations in research itself, that leads to what we've talked about before, which is hopefully the ability to really create a knowledge democracy, a world where all knowledges are valued and honored to come together to improve health equity, because that's the ultimate goal is really to change the relationships of equity, whether it's in the health arena or education arena or in the social development, economic development arena. That's what we're talking about in this broadest picture of our outcomes that we're looking at. Right. So. And with a basic uh, principle that Western science explanations and understandings of the world are only one small understanding or explanations of the world that we have a lot of other sources to create emancipatory uh, narratives and to create um, you know, well-being for everyone that won't come from just one narrative. So thank you.